Hi, I'm Alan Viverette, and I'm a technical lead on the Android Jetpack team at Google. In this talk, I'll be covering the latest Jetpack libraries, as well as some important changes to pre-release library features. For the uninitiated, Android Jetpack is a suite of libraries, tools, and guidance to help developers follow best practices, reduce boilerplate code, and write code that works consistently across Android versions and devices. In short, Jetpack makes it easier for developers to focus on the code they care about. And since last year, adoption of Jetpack has continued to skyrocket. In 2020, we reported that just under half of the top 1,000 apps were using two or more Jetpack libraries, not including core libraries like App Compatter Lifecycle. Today, over three quarters, 79% of the top 1,000 apps rely on Jetpack. And for good reason. We've continued to improve our existing libraries, and we've also introduced new libraries to cover common pain points and make development easier. Before we get to libraries, though, I want to acknowledge a bit of feedback that we've gotten from the community. Jetpack releases a lot of alphas, so we've made some small changes. Alphas are the same. These are libraries under active development. Features may be incomplete, but what's there is tested and should be highly functional. Once a library is feature complete, it moves to beta for stabilization. And here's the change. There may be rare instances where APIs change in response to critical feedback. We understand that alpha has certain implications outside of the strict definitions that we use for versioning. So what this means in practice is that libraries whose features are stable but may need more developer feedback will reach beta sooner with the same level of functional stability that developers expect from a beta. While it's nice to have more flexibility in beta, there are occasionally features that just need more time. Jetpack has introduced new metadata and tooling to isolate individual features, meaning developers will see libraries reach stable much sooner. In practice, feature isolation looks like this. APIs are annotated as part of an experimental feature set, and then any calls to it require explicit opt-in. For folks using Kotlin, this might seem familiar, the requires opt-in annotation. Jetpack has introduced an equivalent set of Java annotations, as well as a lint check that enforces the same opt-in semantics as the Kotlin compiler. So opting in means that the developer understands that the API is alpha quality, and it may change in the future. And when the feature is stabilized, the annotation can be removed. We use this extensively in Jetpack, but the annotation and bundled lint check are available for anyone to use in their apps or libraries. One of the places where you may see experimental is Camera X, where it's being used to ensure that the library can move to stable as devices continue to evolve. The Camera X library provides a unified API surface for accessing camera functionality across OS versions, including device-specific compatibility fixes and workarounds. Some of the latest improvements to the library address common feature requests, including support for adjusting exposure compensation and access to more detailed information about camera state and features. Additionally, camera settings like FPS range may now be changed via camera to interop while the camera is running. The library also brings support for the latest device and OS features, including high dynamic range preview, zoom ratio controls, and support for Android's do not disturb mode. Perhaps most importantly though, the library has continued to address performance, resulting in faster image capture and faster initialization, especially on older devices. To support more robust application design, the most recent alpha version of the Camera X library has split Camera View into Camera Controller, which provides interaction with camera features like zoom and focus, and Preview View, which is responsible for rendering the camera preview and integrating with the Android View system. Here, we're setting up Preview and taking a photo, but Camera Controller provides much more, including image analysis and additional capture options. For developers interested in full-text search, the new App Search library provides high-performance and feature-rich search functionality. App Search provides everything you'd expect from full-text search, and in comparison to SQL, the App Search library makes it easy to perform fuzzy matching, handle synonyms and spelling correction, support multiple languages, and much more. App Search simplifies data representation by including schemas for common object types based on schemas.org and on Android S and later, it allows developers to surface their data in device-wide search. For developers that just want to store basic data, the Data Store library provides a robust approach that addresses the shortcomings of shared preferences while maintaining a simple, highly usable API surface. As a modern replacement for shared preferences, Data Store brings support for best practices like Kotlin coroutines with Flow and RxJava. Data Store also provides multiple ways to define a data model. As a loosely typed key value store that's similar to the old shared preferences model, a proto data store, which stores strongly typed objects using protocol buffers, or whatever fits the use case. So why should developers migrate? Well, while shared preferences works 
okay for smaller apps. Datastore can provide strong guarantees around type safety, asynchronous operations, and error handling, as well as a number of useful features like data migration. Migrating from shared preferences to a basic key value preferences data store is simple. Here, we're creating a shared preferences migration object and passing in the name of our shared preferences, and then using it to create our data store. That's it. Now we can access our preferences using the new data store model. And for developers who are storing preferences, wouldn't it be nice to provide safety guarantees for your security critical preferences? The security crypto library does just that, providing an easy way to encrypt files and preferences. The library has recently launched a stable with data store integration planned for a future version. To encrypt shared preferences, simply create an encrypted shared preference object with the appropriate key and scheme, and then use it like you would a standard shared preferences object. Also moving to 1.0 stable, we have Hilt, Jetpack's recommended dependency injection solution built on top of Dagger. As part of the transition to stable, Hilt's view model support has moved up into the core Hilt Android APIs, and save state handle has been added as a default dependency available in the component. A developer can obtain an annotated Hilt view model from an Android entry point, like an activity or fragment, or obtain a view model scoped to the entry point's navigation backstack. Hilt has also made improvements to work manager integration using assisted inject. With this change, developers no longer need to create their own worker factory and pass in dependencies manually. They can now obtain the dependencies from Hilt's dependency injection graph and remove quite a bit of boilerplate code. Additionally, Hilt has made improvements to testing with the new test install in annotation. This annotation allows you to uninstall and replace modules in tests with build performance improvements over the existing uninstall modules annotation. Here, all tests that would normally be injected with repository module will instead receive the fake repository module. The work manager library, which is Android's recommended way to schedule deferrable asynchronous tasks that run even if the app exits or the device restarts, has made improvements to reliability with task reconciliation, ensuring all tasks are executed, and a variety of workarounds for specific Android OS versions. The latest versions of Work Manager feature improved support for multi-process apps, including performance benefits from unifying work request scheduling into a single process and limiting database growth when scheduling many requests. Version 2.7, which is targeted to the Android S SDK, provides additional support for the platform's new foreground restrictions. See the Effective Background Tasks on Android talk for more information on using Work Manager on Android S. We're also very pleased to announce that the Work Manager Inspector is now available in Android Studio Arctic Fox. This tool allows developers to easily view and debug Work Manager jobs when using the latest versions of the library. The Inspector tool can be opened from Android Studio's Tool Windows menu, and from there, the tool displays the active workers in an app live on device. Developers can perform operations on workers, including removing them from the queue or stopping execution, which can help investigate issues with scheduled jobs. The tool can also provide more detailed information about an individual worker, including how it was executed, details of its worker chain, and execution results. Room, Jetpack's recommended data persistence layer, which provides increased usability and safety over the platform, has also reached stable. The latest version of the library brings experimental support for Kotlin symbol processing, which in our benchmarks of Kotlin code showed a 200% speed improvement over capped, as well as built-in support for enums and RxJava 3. Room has also introduced a query callback class, which provides a callback when SQLite statements are executed to simplify tasks like logging, as well as the new provided type converter annotation, which allows more flexibility when creating type converters. Previously, developers had to rely on static methods, no arg constructors, and build time verification. With this annotation, however, the type conversion object can be constructed at runtime with whatever additional information it needs, and Room will verify its availability when the database is built. On the user interface side of Jetpack, Constraint Lab, a flexible system for designing layouts, has reached 2.0 stable. Along with it, Motion Layout is now stable and ready to provide rich animation and state management. Motion layout is based on constraint layout and provides no code necessary motion animation, including support for foldable devices, image filters, and motion effects. And Studio's motion editor gives developers an interactive visual tool for designing animations. Check out the What's New in Design Tools talk to learn more about using motion editor with motion layout. Over the past year, the Fragment library has undergone a major effort to clean up its internal implementation and reduce undocumented behavior, make it easier for developers to follow best practices in their apps and write reliable tests. 
This lays the groundwork for future improvements to the library, and it may require some work to accommodate strict enforcement of API contracts. In practice, this means that developers should pay careful attention to their tests after updating the library. The fragment release notes call out specific cases to watch out for. Recent releases have also added activity result integration, making it possible to register for activity results from a fragment. Fragment has also introduced a new fragment on attached listener interface to replace the less flexible on attached fragment. Existing code that overrides the method in fragment or activity will still work, but we've deprecated on attached fragment to help prevent new code from accidentally adopting a less flexible approach. The latest alpha of fragment also integrates with the navigation library. Jetpack's framework for moving between destinations in an app to provide support for multiple backstacks and simplify cases where destinations sit at the same depth, such as a bottom navigation bar. For developers who'd like to integrate more closely with Google Assistant, the Google Shortcuts library provides a way to expose actions to Assistant and other Google services through the existing Shortcut Info class. Developers can send up to 15 shortcuts at a time through the Shortcut Manager to be shown on Google Assistant among other services, making them available for voice and other interactions. Here, we've defined a shortcut with an intent and capability binding. This binding provides semantically meaningful information that will help Google services figure out the best way to surface it to users. And for any app that might need to display emoji, which at this point is basically any app with a text input or network back data, the emoji compat library has introduced a new major version with a smaller footprint. Any app that's using AppCompat 1.4 or later will automatically pull in EmojiCompat, giving it the ability to dynamically load new emoji and stay current with the latest Unicode spec. Apps that aren't using AppCompat can receive the same benefits by pulling in the EmojiCompat text view class and using it in place of the platform text view. Paging, which helps developers load portions of data to improve performance and resource consumption, also joins the Stable Release Club with its 3.0 major version. This release features a complete rewrite in Kotlin with first-class support for coroutines and flow, asynchronous loading with RxJava and Guava primitives, and overall improvements to the presentation and repository layers. The 3.0 release is a substantial improvement in usability over paging too, and the rewrite was planned with partial and staged migrations in mind so that developers can transition on their own schedule. For developers interested in understanding their app's performance, the Macro Benchmark library extends Jetpack's benchmarking coverage to app startup and integrated behaviors like scrolling performance. The library can be used remotely to track metrics in continuous integration testing, or locally with profile results viewable from Android Studio. Check out the Measuring Jank and Startup with Macro Benchmark talk to learn more about using the library. We're also pleased to announce that many of the libraries I've talked about today, as well as others developers are already using, have introduced features specifically for integration with Jetpack's new UI toolkit, Compose. Make sure to check out the Jetpack Compose talk to learn more about the new UI toolkit, and watch the Using Jetpack Libraries in Compose talk to learn how to use the latest versions of popular Jetpack libraries, including navigation, constraint layout, and more, with Compose. Jetpack is also making it easier to write UI for new form factors, including foldables, large screen devices, and wear devices. Check out the What's New in Foldables and Now is the Time talks to learn more about developing for these form factors. We've covered a lot of libraries in this talk, but there are quite a few more new and updated libraries that developers might want to check out. Full details for every Jetpack library, including release notes, Maven coordinates, and API reference docs, can be found on developers.android.com slash jetpack. Tip of tree library snapshots are available at androidx.dev. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.